Hello folks. Well you know I'm going to tell you something today about the AMA that uh, a lot of people don't even know about. And uh, the AMA, what's the AMA? Well many of you folks belong to the AMA and this is actually for those who don't know what the AMA is. And uh, no, the AMA does not stand for American Medical Association. It stands for the Academy of Model Aeronautics. Well, what exactly is that? It's a national organization for model aircraft flyers. Respected pilots belong to the AMA, especially the contest flyers. So this may be redundant to you guys. What I'm showing you is those that don't know anything about the AMA and why it may be important to join for yourself and for others. Well, why should a person join the AMA anyway? Well, I would say the number one thing is that they're on the modeler's side, not the government's. They fight really hard for our right to operate our models, and you'd be surprised how difficult that is. You want to find out about the drones? Go to the AMA website and check it out, and you're going to see it all. Well, second of all, and maybe this is first, is the liability insurance provided by the AMA. It's an amazing feature that price-wise I don't think could be beat anywhere. For example, there are two versions of the AMA uh, membership available. The one is the Park Flyer program. This program is actually designed around the use of small aircraft and helicopters, you know, like vapors and small quads that don't need a lot of room to fly. Well, the Park Flyer program provides $500,000 worth of liability insurance. It only costs $29.95 a year, and it comes with a whole lot of other benefits, too, including the quarterly subscription to the Park Pilot magazine. Well, flying vapors are like flying Kleenexes, and they don't hurt much when you get hit, but you could get an eye put out or something, so it's well worth it. But then there is the full AMA subscription, and it's for those of us that fly the bigger models, the gas models, the big turbines, etc. Well, the insurance coverage for us is $2.5 million liability and also includes $25,000 accident medical insurance and includes a $10,000 death and a $1,000 fire and theft policy. Pretty, pretty good. On top of that, an AMA sanctioned club can also ensure their flying site for 2.5 million dollars allowing the landowners it's a good incentive to let uh, let you fly there more readily well, on top of that the full membership also includes many benefits I mean just got to look on the website to see including the monthly subscription to model aviation magazine this is a gorgeous magazine it's full of all the latest stuff that's available all the articles good reading and the cost of that full membership and insurance 58 bucks a year. <laughs> that is a deal. You know, for the insurance coverage alone, that's peace of mind. Especially if you hurt someone or damage something. I mean, what could go wrong? You know, I also feel good when I'm flying with someone, the camaraderie for one thing, but some of this also insured because, you know, stuff happens. So uh, you've got to know the rules. And there's just simple common sense rules and uh, not that hard to follow. Uh, it's good that everybody knows those because sometimes the victim is actually the spectator. And you know, I've seen many accidents over the years, including my own breaking of four bones in my right foot from kicking a gas helicopter's blades, stopping it from going into the crowd, and to seeing Frank Johnson cut his thumb tip off in a ducted fan MiG. Anyway, I do know that the AMA did leave one rule out. It's in my nine helicopter uh, tips and rules of, of thumb, and that is, don't step on your plane in the dark. And worse, don't step on somebody else's plane in the dark. Well, besides covering the modeler's butts, the Academy actually sanctions more than 2,500 events annually. They have youth scholarship programs and grants, they have a beautiful museum, library, including magazine archives. I just tried it out by looking up the article I wrote in 1979. Um, I show how to add dual rates, which were new at the time, into any RC transmitter. Gosh, this just seems so long time ago. Well, besides the archives, they've got a national flying site in Muncie, Indiana. It is also one of the flying sites available to fly on 
uh, using the Aerofly RC7 simulator. So you can actually see what that's like to fly there if you can't make it personally. Well, the main reason I bring up the Academy of Model Aeronautics in the first place is one, to make the folks aware that aren't aware, you've heard the term, but you might not know, and, uh, and let you know that they are really working very hard in Washington to keep uh, the drones, which they call nowadays, in our hands, enforcing our rights. And uh, we're keeping up with that, and you can read about that on the AMA website. Second of all, and mostly, it was just simply to let you know that they also have an e-store. You know, if you haven't visited yet, you might like to because it's loaded with related stuff to the model industry, including jewelry and clothing. You know, I know that if you want a good pair of flying glasses that really work, or a jacket that actually works when you're flying, you look at the ads on the related aircraft websites and magazines. You're not going to find it at Kmart. In my case, I was looking for a jacket, you know, it's still a little chilly out, and something that uh, would work well when you're flying RC. Well, you're seeing the one I found. It's a soft corduroy and very warm. The neck zips up, yet still allows for good movement, and it truly stops that wind. There are zippers in all the pockets, so you're not going to lose your glop or nice starter. And there's also a shoulder pocket for your phone, pens, cards, etc. I mean, I really like it. And while I was at the site, I also found some neat jewelry for my wife and a really neat kite. And even a patch with my name on it. <laughs> I know that some of these items are available at other places, but since this is a non-profit organization working for us, I'd like to support them. I hope you do too. You see, in 1962, I joined the WAM. It stood for Western Associated Modelers. I was starting to fly in contests and you had to be insured and the WAM was the only way. You see, the idea for the AMA began in 1935, even maybe before that at the National Championships in Detroit, Michigan. Leaders and contestants were interested in a self-governing body of aero modeling experts. You know, thought being that there should be an expert guidance of for and by model builders. Modelers wanted a single voice to develop national rules for aero modeling contests, as well as one voice to speak to the government. And as the model aviation hobby grew, the AMA did too, which eventually the WAM was absorbed into, thus creating the largest model aviation organization in the world. You know, at the time, I was a member of the Sioux Falls RCers Club and remember meeting Johnny Clemens. He was the president of the AMA and he came and visited our club. It was a big honor. So I asked the question again. Well, why should a person join the AMA anyway? You know, heck, many can just go to the hobby shop, buy the model and go try and figure it out themselves. You know, and then they go back to the hobby shop complaining the model was faulty. <laughs> You know, it really helps tremendously to learn that first lesson from a qualified pilot. He can check out the controls and make sure all is well for your first flight, save you some time and money. So you know, by finding an AMA club near you, you're going to find modelers like yourself and you're going to have some fun too. And you're going to learn to fly. And if you join, it would be great to welcome you aboard. Thanks for watching. Happy and safe flying.